Last man who kills predators from prey. I, mean, I can fight, but I kind of need other people to show up. What do you mean? Why is he pinging me? Question. I'm muting this guy. He deserves to lose already. Like, dude, you want me to fucking run it down and just go nuts there? Like, what do you mean? You want me to flash apprehend them? Like, bro, where are you? Why are you down here? Crazy stuff. I mean, I can just leash. I can tank a few hits. Not a big. I really actually need a buff. Ah, uh, disagree. We are. I just wanted to make sure he wasn't choosing the they weren't choosing his two. I'm gonna just proc my bleed on it. Five stacks. It does a shitload of damage as you can see. Would have been awkward if the ble bleed stole it though. <laughs> Would have been FF open. Irelia is fine. Like, why does she need a buff? I don't think there's anything Irelia does that's like particularly weak right now. Like I think her builds are good. I think her matchups are decent all across the board. Yeah, maybe top lane they're bad, but you should play her mid, you know, like fine. I don't I don't see it like mid lane meta to be unplayable for her. Maybe Syndra is, but you just ban Syndra and then what do you play against Oriana? Seems pretty free. What else is there in mid lane that's meta right now? Silas, Akali, seems fine. Yeah, you're not winning into Akali. Silas, you're winning, so you win some, you lose some, you know. I can contest push against this guy because he's just playing really safe for no reason. And then he lets me hit those Qs, you know, and it's just like... Like, the point is, this is what I mean with like, why are, why are Asian top laners better than... Um... Why are uh, Asian top laners better than thingy someone asked me, right? And it's like, I, I'm playing against this guy that's losing push against Darius and getting bullied by Darius 1v1. At level 2, bro. At level 2 I already had the pressure on him. Like, what can I say? <laughs> See what I mean? It's like... I can tell you, if I play on Korea server, that doesn't happen. I don't- I don't get to- I don't get to bully a Jace and send him- like, make him flash away from me this early without flashing. It just doesn't happen. Graves is coming straight top here, I have to recall, no choice. I'd love to touch the wave and like murder this guy with my flash advantage, but I just can't. I have to take my cut my losses with Graves being in top river doing top crab. So I will recall. It's not even just perma harass, but it's everything. The spacing, the wave control. There's too much to there's too much to really like say specifically what it is, right? But my point is, like, I'm not gonna blame this fucking random Jace player for the difference between two top, like, between Asian and Korea, but you can't neglect the fact that having better players on average in all your solo queue games is is a boon, right? That's a big deal, right? I, the main issue is, I think, is the, the lack of um, mental fortitude, uh, actually, from Western players. Like, they go to Worlds, they get shit on because suddenly they, they realize that a matchup they thought they knew how to play is no nowhere near actually the reality of the matchup and i think that's like the hardest part for most players is um they show show up the worlds and they get their fucking shit kicked in on repeat every single scrim <laughs> and it makes sense like that's not easy i'll tell you like i mean i never minded I, I had fun doing it but it can be pretty demor demoralizing, you know? You thought you were good, you know? You made it to Worlds, and suddenly... You're everyone's, like, you're the joke on the block, you know? Like, everyone genuinely thinks you're fucking shit. And you you know it, because, like, Worlds players, like, they don't fuck around. They show it. You know what they do? They pick random shit. Like, they literally they start fucking trolling. I'm not even joking, like, they start clicking troll shit and still shitting on you, and you're just like, wow, really? Like, I'm out here sweating and this guy just owns me? Like, no matter what? Like, that feels bad, man. You 
He may live, but I won't let him re-enter the tower unless Graves comes to stop me. Graves is down there, so he doesn't get to re-enter. He doesn't have plant yet. It's 10 more seconds, so... Not a bad flash, I'd, I'd say. A bit of a flip there, but I was fairly confident that I'd, I'd get that. Fairly confident. I mean, if he kills me there, I'm pretty sad, but... If his hammer Q kills me there, I'd be impressed, honestly. Like, here, Jay's doing that much damage and just EQQ, that's pretty impressive. I had a feel for how much damage Jace is doing. I don't think it would kill me there. Point is, is like, <laughs> like, for example, remember when that fucking Tom picked Nasus against Fnatic? Like, on stage, one in 20 minutes? Like... That's the type of shit they do in scrims, bro. Like, that, that was a good example of what would happen in scrims. And you're just like, dude, what the fuck? Like, I'm out here sweating with my meta picks. This guy picks fucking Maokai. Oh, sorry. Picks fucking Nasus. Still wins. Like, mm? it wasn't even that Nasus was particularly the reason they won that game. I think, like, Ben did fine. Or, sorry, Maokai did fine that game. Just, just that combined with the team being really strong. It's tough. Get behind him and he has no way of living here. Nice uh, spear by him. There's glimpses of it, you know? Like, the shy picking the aura, not the same idea, but, like, imagine that happening to you in scrims, and then you get fucking annihilated as well. Like, randomly, this guy decides, ah, I'm, I'm in the mood for a Fiora game. As if he's playing fucking solo queue, and he just annihilates you, and you're just like, dude, what the fuck? Like, this guy's, like, huh? You're a bit dizzy, you know? And uh, like I said, it can just be demoralizing after a certain point. I'll just recall here instead of playing to like dive in between towers. Graves could be topside. I don't want to take the risk. I'm already massively ahead. Just, uh, capital, like, sorry. Um, spending my money is more meaningful, I think. I'm just going to get the movement speed component instead of the pickaxe. As long as I get on top of him, I obviously annihilate him at this point. So, yeah. You make Jace matchup look like Diary's favored. It's a two-way it's a, it's a two street here. It's not just me. Enemy Jace player is helping in that contribution holy fuck brand is broken he's just fucking sending it 1v2 it's always a two-way two -way street you know the thing about top lane is it's probably the most knowledge knowledge check ma like lane out of any lane hmm wait why did he walk back into me i ulted him there just for the bonus damage um, I just wanted the extra damage. It gives you a mini dash too, so if he does walk into you, you do punish him, but like, there's no incentive for him to do that, you know? He chose to do that. Anyway, I'm gonna go to plant no matter what, because I don't want to get ganked by Graves and die, so... Bye. Brand is beyond broken. I mean, I don't necessarily disagree that Brand is quite strong, but beyond broken? I don't know, I feel like... I mean, as a Juggernaut player, I don't really mind Brand all that much, because I actually play champions that can stat check through his damage output. <laughs> Uh, he shot blasted the back wave, so I'm gonna make him lose three melees here before I start pushing. They just count. Look, 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 look at these melees. Right, you can start auto attacking the range creeps and like setting up the range. Like, you can set up the creeps as they're dying, and it's like similar enough time, but you get to die guaranteed three melee creeps, which is pretty nice. If you fast push and he stays, maybe he shot blasted them or something. But if you put your body in between them, then it's guaranteed. Uh, I don't think my bleed kills these, does it? I think I need Doran's blade for my bleed to kill them, yeah. Hmm. Well, missed some CS, that's fine. I'm gonna take another recall here. Same thing, just solidify your lead. A gold lead, when you don't have a completed item, is less of a gold lead than when you have a completed item. So basically, what I'm saying is, let's say I'm up a thousand gold right now. I'm up a thousand gold on this guy, right? Random number, a thousand gold. Now, if I wait until I have Stridebreaker and I'm up a thousand gold and he has components towards his eclipse but not quite his eclipse and i have my stride breaker then now the thousand gold is worth more because a completed item in terms of combat power is worth more than its components that is why when you're ahead continuously taking recalls and taking smaller and smaller wins by for example denying him those three melee creeps and then recalling is the best way to push your lead well not the best way the most consistent way to push your lead Even if you maintain the same amount of gold lead, it's still winning. I had summoners to follow him, but uh, yeah, he, he can't Jace combo me like that. 
Like, if I apprehend him out of his E, like, input buffer it into his E, then I just murder him. He's gonna TP back here, so I don't want to use my, too much tempo here, but uh, I'm making the decision that after killing him and he TPs back, I'm just gonna lane normally. So I'm just gonna lane as if I was fresh, but with a, a lot of gold in my pocket. That was an illegal uh, form transfer. I probably could have squeezed in uh, one more thingy there, one more auto if I needed to, but I knew for a fact that that... Oh, he leveled up. Never mind. Oh, he's still dead because Nidalee's going to walk up and auto-attack him. I'll give the gold to Nidalee and the kill credit because it's generally just worth more. Usually, this like, when I would be playing competitive, so a big thing that I was a big fan of is like right here, if this is Nidalee's Night Harvester, I would want her to use Herald because her spiking on Harvester is also really meaningful in the game. Obviously, me spiking on... Um, Scribe Breaker is big, but I have my Scribe Breaker even if I just farm this next wave. So for me, heralding is not great. But I think the argument of heralding for Nidalee's item is something that gets overlooked in some uh, in some cases, and I think it's actually pretty important. Uh, something means Selfmade did really well, actually. Um, communicating around that and actually making plans around that, uh, especially when he played champions that would like hard snowball off that. Which is. Mostly what he played, so, you know, like Graves, Kindred, all this type of stuff, you know. Uh, well, mostly Graves, Hecarim, I'd say. And then some alternative picks, but whenever he would play a similar, like, carry-type champion, like Nidalee, Graves, whatever. Uh, it's something we always talked about when we got Herald, and I was in a good position top, and I, I really, I want to bring that back, you know, because I think that's a, a very successful pattern. Owls, what? I don't even know how to pronounce your name, but thank you. ALSW, that's what I'll call you for the tier one sub. Kind of you. He was very good at Eve. Another example of a champion. Good evening. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you joining. Appreciate you all joining. Thank you. I should have started pinging earlier, but see what I mean? Like, I know that's a speaker, right? But it's a good example of someone like, he helps me communicate. And when I dropped the ball in communication, he picked up on it, right? Like he started pinging Jace as soon as he was showing mid on a ward, even though I hadn't. Uh, he could be going some other way, but for the most part, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, when you hit level 11 and you stack, uh, your passive like I just did, you do a shit ton of damage, so I decided to capitalize right there and then. I have apprehend to extend the trade, so I'll just back off here. But yeah, I just took that turn because uh, I killed the enemy support there. I mean, I was just lo looking to... Uh... Like, I was just looking for Jace and then suddenly there was uh, a buffet with a support player. Oh, you can eat. Mmm, double kill. That R did 75% HP bar damage. Yeah, a little less, but the bleed would have, yeah. But yeah, he has a lot of. He has a quite low base health, and in general, uh, he's low level, so. Level 11 is one of Darius's largest spikes that I try to play around. The ult damage gets pretty silly at level 11. Already. Carrying the 25% win rate earlier. You know it. I mean, he's playing fine this game. Nothing impressive, but nothing to whine about either. <laughs> Loop around here and <laughs> where can I spread my influence to the best? Do they have a ward here or not? If they do, then they can actually kill me with Brand and Twitch both ganking me. This chase is not a threat, but since we're going bottom side, well, with Twitch showing, I am no longer this scared, so I'll just catch the next top wave. Ba, ba, ba. Do you think Darius is super viable? Uh, super viable? Not really, but uh, viable. He's had a meta where he was played regularly in even in LPL and LCK, which is when Dr. Mundo was the best champion in the game top lane. I know it's crazy if you've been playing League since recently, but it has happened. I don't know when his E is, so I just wanted to apprehend and deal any damage, then miss the opportunity to deal damage to him at all. Which is a bit annoying. I don't think he's a threat necessarily, but oh fuck. Bro, 
god, this guy swapped forms in my face like three different times and I've killed him every single time. I wonder if next time I'll learn. But yes, I will kill him again. If he disrespects me again. That is a promise. Mm-hmm. Bring it all down. A bit greedy, but I, I think I see enough information to touch next wave. I didn't apprehend the damage there, that's my bad. I'm gonna leave because I'm not worried about him, I'm worried about who's coming after him. Uh, I need to apprehend the hammer damage there, otherwise apprehending like that is bad. Well, that's not great. As far as I understand, you did not have phase rush for that, so... I don't mind. I get a one for one and some random champ gets the kill. Worth. I got Jason Splash there through that whole sequence, so he can't look at me in the eyes again for the next uh, five minutes or four minutes and something because uh, he plays Cosmic Inside, I imagine. Cool. Guys, anyway, beautiful. Starks Gage is next. Uh, unless, I mean, honestly, this might just be a Force of Nature game just because uh, Magic Resistance is that good against their comp. I don't like stacking Force of Nature and Deadmans over Starax usually, but I think this particular game I might- I mean, honestly, I might just sit on Negatron and go Starax. It depends how much money I've got, because uh, it's it's a big jump, right? It's 1100 more investment. If I can buy the Force of Nature and get uh, a spike, I'd rather just spike with that than just sit on the components of Starax if there's a big fight. If there's no big fight, I definitely will just omit going for Force of Nature and grab Starax into uh, Abyssal Mask. So the chem, tank, chem tank is not an item. Don't look at it. Don't pretend it exists. It, just, it doesn't. It's actually dog shit. The worst item in the game. It is complete unadulterated ass. Uh, I'll press S here and just chill mid. I have no. I, I don't really want to fight unless they run into me and I suspect they won't. So instead of sitting in this bush, I'll just press S here. Alright, it's dead. I get unleashed on the map now. Uh, both tier 2s are down, so the only thing we can do is play for tier 2 mid, and the easiest way to do that is push deep. Push uh, all the way to their tier 3, and then I take the inside route here, and uh, we look to attack it like that. It's not easy to crack if the enemy team defends well, but... Uh, basically, uh, making progress on a tier 3, unless you have like a 20k gold lead, is not possible. Um, 20k, like, you know, large gold lead is what I'm trying to say. It's not really possible, it shouldn't be at least, so most teams just agree to start playing like really efficiently in terms of clearing their own jungle clearing the enemy jungle and that's what they play for instead of towers but in the solo queue people make mistakes so maybe we can crack it here too we'll see either way i'm collapsing on this guy i have my bot lane healthy and my lead on bot side making a play so this will tickle i don't want to use my uh flash here if i can avoid it i can't avoid it i'm too fast for them to catch up to me so i'm just gonna keep running my ghost is gonna Keep me alive. He may W the bush here or uh and turn around the corner. So I think I beat him when he has no W, but I don't know for sure. He opened mid, so that's fine. I'll recall. Mm -mm. They used all the valuable ultimates, and that's plenty for in terms of pressure. I don't need to play to kill them there. If they all run towards me and use the uh like all their meaningful cooldowns, like virus ultimate and twitch ultimate, like their champs don't really do shit without their ults this game. Some champions need their ultimates to function when they're behind, and uh, when you're pressuring the opponents, you don't have to play to kill them. Just take their ult and run. It's fine. I have to sidestep the Graves ult because uh, Collector was going to finish me off. Oh, uh, yeah. I think I can go for for this. I think that's okay. Probably go Starx at this point. I don't see that there's anything pressing coming up. Baron will be a matter of, like, either we'll make picks and it'll be free, or, like, if my team forces it, they're just... Like, they're just impatient, and that doesn't make it a good call, you know? Not to say that we can't, but I don't see why I'd buy Force Nature specifically here, just because we want to rush Baron, that seems a bit silly. I mean, unless it's, like, straight out of base, we're running there and we're doing it, then I'm down, but... I, I'll i be spending a lot of time pressuring bot lane here. The reason why I want to pressure bot is because, um... If I actually walk here and push waves and farm, 
we don't lose any of the inhibitor farm. So, um, because I'm rather mobile with my build, in the sense of like, I'm hard to catch, right? So watch this. I show up, I killed most of the wave, and I start running away, right? So, well, how long does that take me? Obviously, I don't have to CS these creeps, right? That's just bonus. But the point is, like, it takes me, like, what? Let's say it takes me four seconds or five seconds to show up, trim most of the wave, and then run. And I still catch most of the farm before I start running, right? Wait, I missed that. I'm bad. XD. Same idea here, you know? Actually, I have a turn to hit mid here, so I'll, I'll take that turn instead. Ah, oh, this is gonna tickle. Queuing gives me movement speed even if I hit creep, so I queued there to hit the creep to get movement speed. Rest in peace and farm. But I still get the experience, which is nice. But this is the idea of um, still pushing, going bottom lane and pushing, and then just you push, move mid, push, move mid, push, move mid. The wave just spawned, and I kind of want to stay until I have my Star Axe before I base, so I'm just going to chill here. I probably can't kill Jace. He has Flash, and in general, uh, he has two items now, so he deals damage. I can't ignore him completely. Um, so I, I just want to like, catch it safe. Uh, a neat trick, actually, if you're playing um, if you're playing a, a, with an open inhibitor yourselves, is to leave the leave the the melee minion up as long as you can. The melee minion is actually capable of killing whole minion waves by himself. So the strat there is um, uh, he solo kills me actually there. I, I could apprehend him out of his hammer queue and I'd beat him, but I, he solo kills me if I don't apprehend his hammer queue. So that's my bad. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have gone for that. That's my bad. I got greedy. Uh, as I was saying, basically what you do is, is you kill every other creep except the, the except this can of the super minion, and the super minion will clear the entire minion wave, even if it's a cannon wave. If it's full health, it will clear the entire minion wave. So what you can do is, is you can literally just right now what they can do is if they don't want to take this tower, let's say obviously it's not bad for them to it gives them bounty and stuff, but let's say they don't. What they do is they clear the whole minion wave except this the super minion, and then it will create a slow push by itself, and it will eat all my farm, and meanwhile, they only lose, like, you know, 90 gold, because they didn't farm one super creep, which is 90 gold, but every other creep on the wave is worth the big bucks. Uh, it's a, it's a little neat little strat you can do if you want to be really efficient when you have an inhibitor down. I want to grab this item here before I group and fight. If they want to do stuff, I'm not going to stop them because, well, we're fed, so I don't see an angle to myself because, like I said, I feel like I need Star Axe in order to hold my weight in fights in this comp because they're 5 range, literally. And without Star Axe, it's really hard for me to run up, especially also without Flush, so I want my Flush and my, my Star Axe here before I make a, a, a dedicated team fight play, which is what I've been waiting for and why I've been farming side lanes mostly. Is it worth the trade-off of continuing to pressure the side wave with Baron up, though? Yeah, because it's only one super, and the super will die to the second minion wave. It's just... Like... The supers will die. It's not like the supers just one-shot the wave with full HP. So when it gets to your Nexus, the supers will be, like, you'll be fine. Unless there's a champion that can TP on them, it's fine. Obviously, like, there's sometimes it's better to clear the wave, but... There's actually more pressure on a side wave when you fast push the wave and ignore, like, let the supers walk all the way up here. I think, sorry, let your wave walk all the way up here because you create a massive slow push towards your own base. Because you're, you're like, let's put it this way. Blue team supers start fighting minions here. They're going to stack supers all the way down. All the way down here. And then you're going to have a two or three super minion wave that's going to absolutely decimate your base by itself. So it's actually better to do the strat if you're worried about side lane pressure. I'm going to grab this cannon before I move. I was hoping Twitch solo opening wouldn't kill both my jungler and my support. I'm down for one of them to die and then Twitch dying, but both would be a bit much. I'm investigating. Hello there. Hello, motherfucker! Voice. I'm alive. As I said, I need both my summoner spells to make a play, and when I have them, I'll gain. I heal with a Q off Baron, so I don't mind tanking this with Nidley heals as well. I was a bit, a bit greedy going for the virus kill there, but I was in the mood for it. 
next up. I'll actually buy Force of Nature here. Ooh, that is a one for one. I will not grant him. If I can, it seems like you're dead. Yeah, we should move forward, thingy there. Nice, he lives. If I can stop the one for one, it's good. I'll go Force of Nature because I think the Abyssal Mask is just kind of whatever this game. I'll probably split push anyway. I mean, you could start building towards Hullbreaker as well, but in general, I, I like the idea of finishing the item here with my Baron buff. Maximum power. Case is so sad. Did he not kill Aurelia bot lane? Oh, he didn't, because Aurelia has Baron buff. Wait, the big plays, there it is. The 25% mechanics. He showed me. Uh, you have the wall there, so a small movement I did there is before I committed, as like I stepped in between the, him and the wall before I apprehended him. Uh, because that means if he ease me into the wall, I can apprehend him anyway, and he'll die. And if he doesn't um, e me, then I only need one more auto attack and to apprehend R. Oh, like, I needed one more auto before I could apprehend auto R him, and then that's a sequence that you can't in, 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 interrupt as Jace, because he will e me during my R animation, and he'll be dead anyway. Because I can auto into R. So, a uh, small thing there, but it does make a difference. Small difference. Maybe not this game, but it'll make a difference in one of your games if you play a lot of Darius in this matchup. It's a lousy apprehend. Just, just fact, just fact checking, you know? Testing the temperature. How scared is he of me? <laughs> See what I mean? Like, just running at some people, you will get their cooldowns. <laughs> They're so scared of me. <laughs> And it's like, the reason why it's good what I'm doing is because my teammates and cannons are hitting the Nexus, right? So... Boom. And that is the Nexus exploding. How does Nidalee have more kills than me? I'm pissed. Fine, I'll allow it. How's my already back up after 16 when you kill it you do not have a cooldown on it if it kills it resets permanently after level 16 that's why i used it speak up late about this game What a shame I couldn't watch landing phase. You'll get to watch it on the VOD. It'll get uploaded to YouTube eventually, and if not, you have the Twitch VOD. If you're dedicated enough, you will learn. I'll be in queue anyway. Feel free to go check it out. Bad Darius feels like Season 5 reworked Darius. Yeah, Star Axe is pretty broken. Having a Camille's queue without CD. <laughs> Bro. Back in my day, people would compare Darius ult to Cho'Gath ult. Comparing that shit to Camille queue, bro. Milk you is like one one step ahead of poor little Choggy. Glad you make the Twitch box vaults accessible. No worries. Milk you was Choggathold. True. Just turn brain off, run in, two 